Hi, it's Aga from Marvis Artist. Today's topic, PBR materials. What is it? How to create them? And why is it worth to use them? So first, let me explain what this PBR means. It's a shortcut from physically based rendering. It's a method of rendering that provides a more accurate representation of how light interacts with surfaces. As I said, it's more accurate and as a result, it's more realistic. 3ds Max Corona and Vera materials support this method. Creating PBR materials is based on a set of specific textures, which define specific characteristics of the material, for example, base color, metalness, roughness, and so on. So now, let me compare creating materials with typical maps and PBR textures. So basically, if we don't have the PBR textures, what we artists normally do, we look for a diffuse texture. Let's say we found something like this. So we create the material and plug the texture to the diffuse slot. As we don't have other maps, we plug the saturated diffuse maps to different slots. I use color correction. We should change some values in the material as well. So let's plug it to the reflection glossiness slot and bump slot. We can of course adjust it more, make the map more contrasty for instance. Let's see how it works. Let's start interactive rendering. First of all, it's not a great quality texture, but it doesn't matter here too much. We can adjust reflection glossiness to make the wood more or less matte. but it's not the point of our interest here. I want to show you the bump map. I will unplug everything except the bump texture. It's just easier to see what this map is doing. So the thing with this map is that it's not really accurate, as it makes the depth based on the diffuse map. So if the diffuse map is darker in some parts, the higher values of depth will be created, which is not always the case. So, if we want to create more accurate material, we need to have PBR textures. The map are high quality and seamless. The ones I have here are from Polygon website, however, there are lots of other sources too. Let's see how it looks. In this case, as it's a wood material, we have a diffuse map, glossiness map, normal map, and reflection map. PBR materials represent the way how the materials behave in real life. So you don't need to spend time tweaking the values to get realistic results. Of course you can, if you want to change the material somehow. But in general, these maps give you great results. So polygon textures come with a special script that allows you to create the material with a few clicks. So you need to choose the renderer, for me it will be Corona then the folder where the textures are saved, now load the material and assign to the object. I copy the sphere first to see the difference. And assign. Let's see what we get. And it's basically done. Awesome, right? So we have a color map plugged to diffuse slot. We have a dedicated map to reflection in the correct slot. The same for glossiness and for the bump. Let me show you how it looks. So you can see that it works pretty well. Now let's take a look at the bump. I unplug the maps.
and it's not too much visible, I increase it just for testing purposes. You can see that the bump is really nice and sharp. And it looks really natural. So we have a bump where it should be. You can see the deeper parts clearly on the map. The same for glossiness. The map is not simply saturated as I've done before. It will be easier to see in Photoshop. Let me compare this for you. So I have the diffuse map here with the adjustment on top that desaturated it. Now to compare it, I turn on the glossiness map. Look here for instance. So on the glossiness map, this part is light, whereas if we simply desaturate the diffuse map, it will be dark here. The same here, we have a bigger gradient here than on the glossiness map. So these are different maps that represent different characteristics. On the reflection pass, it's even more clearly visible how the reflection map works in this material. I show you one more material to give you a better idea. This time it will be a brick, the same procedure as before. So, in this case, we have an additional displacement map. Let's see the preview. Start interactive rendering. I need to change the displacement value as I have my scene in millimeters and it's way too big. Here we go. Here is how it looks. Look at the displacement, you can notice that it's not the same in every place. Let me show you the map. You can notice that the black lines have different thickness and intensity of black color, which is much more closer to the real world than perfect lines. So is it worth using them? Of course. It can save you a lot of time as you don't need to create every single material from scratch. But it doesn't mean that you don't have to understand the materials and know how to create them. As a lot of time, you need to make some small adjustments to make the material fit better to your scene or fit your needs. But for sure, it makes your workflow faster and the output more photorealistic. So I highly recommend it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe, and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video.